All right, this is Drew Levinis with uh, Barbecue Superstars, and I'm standing here with Randy, who's uh, owner of uh, three restaurants in Alabama, uh, Dad, uh, Dad's Barbecue. And uh, Randy, man, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, how, how long have you um, had your rest restaurants open? Uh, about six years now. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, they're located in uh, what parts of Alabama? Uh, we're in Anston, Alabama, which is in between uh, Birmingham and Atlanta. Then we have one that's uh, further north in Gaston, Alabama, Rainbow City. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, so uh, how long have you been doing uh, uh, barbecue competitions? Uh, this is only our second year to do competitions. We've been uh, busy in the restaurant, so we, we didn't think we had enough time to do this, but uh, we, we're making time. We enjoy it, having a good time. That's great. That's great. I know uh, getting out here and being around all these people in the barbecue world is just a hat in time, hat in time. And so uh, what made you decide to uh, get into a, a barbecue competition? Well, basically, the guys inside here, they uh, they live and breathe barbecue all, all the day, trying to figure out what to do and how to do it, and uh, uh, they kept pushing me enough where I said, well, okay, we'll get out here and try it, and uh, um, but those guys, they're the ones that pushes me because I do enough with the restaurants, but they wanted to get out here and try what they wanted to do, and, and it's worked out. We're doing we're doing good. That's great. That's great. I know it puts uh, you know it's a lot of time and effort that goes in not all, not only the restaurant but uh, these competition stuff. You know, bringing your own meat. I know that gets expensive and uh, wood and all that stuff. So I'm sure uh, I'm sure you know that's a uh, it's a handful. I'm sure. Yes, it is. So I, I guess you're you're happy to have these guys with you, though, right? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You know, well, I get to stand out here and do this while they're in there prepping all the food and everything. So. I, 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 I'm kind of relaxed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So, what do you think? Uh, can you give us an idea of like how much it would it cost to actually put on a, a competition, or not a competition, but a team together for like a weekend to uh, compete? Uh, well, not including hotel rooms. That's you know, we've got probably almost five hundred dollars worth of meat in there, plus uh, uh, gas. That's going to run us about two hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and uh, hotel room. For three nights, about two hundred dollars also. So you're looking at somewhere eight hundred to a thousand dollars, you know, yeah. for a weekend. Yeah, that, that that that's expensive. That's expensive, but I know it's well worth it. It's well worth it. Oh, yeah. uh, how many competitions do you think you're going to do this year? We're thinking uh, at, at least four, maybe six. We're going to try. Uh, we will go back to Knock Little Falls uh, in in uh, Gas in Alabama, then Sloss Furnace in Birmingham, Alabama, and probably Whistle Stop up in Huntsville, Alabama. Stay, stay a little closer this time. We, this is our long trip. This is, this is a long trip. <laughs> I hear you. Trip. I hear you. Um, well, that's great. Well, that's great. Well, Daryl's inside uh, taking some shots of the uh, the, the food prep. Uh, uh, Dad's barbecue has been nice uh, enough to let us uh, get some meat shots. So hopefully uh, you all enjoy those shots here in a bit. And, uh, yeah, we're smoking it down here in Tallahassee at the Pig Fest. And I uh, uh, hope everything's going well at your home. And uh, barbecue's about food, family, friends, and fun. And we'll see you later on in the show. Going, he's going to go mustard on it. All mustard does is give you a slather to hold your rub. Okay, a binding agent. That's it. Spend a lot less time on the fat cap than you do the, the meat side. Leaving that fat on top of the uh, meat just adds a lot of flavor to the meat. It really does. We use it, our smokers are water-based, so they actually do a steam and a smoke. So we use a fat layer to separate the heat from the meat. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot of people like to render their fat and let it drip. To me, you save a lot more moisture with your fat cap down because uh, it, it's a seal, it's a barrier. Uh -huh. Now, if you were going to the supermarket and you were going to try to pick out a brisket, uh, could you show us on that brisket what you'd try to look for as uh, the higher quality or better quality brisket? You will, uh, in a store, it's very difficult. If you can find, if you buy them froze, there's no really way. But if you've got a, uh, a fresh brisket, you'll want to pick that brisket up and it should be fairly limber. Okay. And if you can, you want to see marbling, just as we talked about throughout the meat, heavy marble, because if not, brisket will wind up like shoe leather. Yeah, it's like a real hard piece of meat. It's a very hard piece of meat. Uh, okay, so you're using Oak Ridge Barbecue's rub. We use Oak Ridge rubs.
Man, that's beautiful. There is something special about this barbecue team. They got it going on, don't they? Yeah, they do. <laughs> you know, like I said, you're not going to waste a, in our opinion, we don't waste a lot of time on a fat cat. Like those weird rubs out. They're out of uh, Kansas City. They use a high quality sugar base, the raw sugars, which have a higher burning point. You don't get a real black charcoal bark. They taste bitter. Okay. That's the key to your raw sugars. Uh, and what type of sugar did you say to use? It's a, it's a raw sugar. Oh, it's some kind of raw sugar. It's a. I'd rather not say, but it, okay. That's it's okay. Just a, it's just a high quality sugar. Well, on the radio show, I'm sure many of you have heard me say that, uh, you know, uh, you don't start basting your brisket till it's about halfway cooked or three quarters of the way cooked. And uh, you don't put barbecue sauce on it, if you want barbecue sauce, till the last hour. We use uh, no sauce. But no, you don't use any sauce? Not on the brisket. Not on the brisket. Okay, that's interesting. We will save, we will save natural juices and mix them stuff with it and then we'll do a light glaze as it's presented but as far as the sauce on the brisket I think that's the key is let the brisket speak for itself okay. if you've got a good brisket it should uh, it should stand on its own Prepared brisket. Wow. Ready for wrap. Okay. I need a marinade for as long as we can at competition. At home, we'll do them 24 hours. Now, the wrap, is it tin foil or is it full? I mean, uh, saran wrap. Saran wrap, plastic. Yeah. Okay, go pop in the refrigerator and then let it pull, in, pull the yeah, flavors out. Tell you a little bit about what they're doing. Pulling all the silver skin off the membrane off the bottom of the ribs. Mm -hmm. fat, scraping the fat off, getting all the. Okay, uh, you've already got the uh, uh, the uh, membrane. membrane off of it. So now you're coming in between the bones and. Because uh, you've got plenty of fat anyway. Mm -hmm. Just laying in the trim side. You've got to start out with a basic cut of meat. Yeah, you know, that's one thing uh, Johnny Trick kept saying on the radio show was that, you know, if you don't start off with a real high quality piece of meat, then you're not going to be able to uh, formulate it into something. Uh, uh, what, what brand of ribs do you guys? Is this from SRE also? These are uh, Hornwell St. Louis style. Okay, Hornwell. Company. Get this silver skin off. It's a, it's a job. The more you get off, the better it is. And what's your name? Jonathan. Okay. And you're with what's the team? Dance. Dance Barbecue. Now they friends, they got restaurants, uh, they got everything. Uh, down in Alabama. There's one ready to go. Okay. Let's take it back up. Okay, now it'd be interesting to see. Do you use the same rub, the Oak Ridge rub on the ribs that you use it's on? A, it's an Oak Ridge rock, but it's a different It's uh, a different rub. It's a different rub. So there's a brisket rub that you there's use. A, and there's, there's a brisket rub, and then there's a there's a, a, a poultry, game bird, chicken, that kind of stuff. How did you guys find out about Oak Ridge's rubs? It's a long story. No, really? Uh, 
I read a lot of uh, old Dave Fofong's blog. Uh -huh. He's a competition guy out of uh, Indiana, I believe. Mm -hmm. He's been cooking competition about 25 years. And uh, he got a link to another blog, uh, another competitor, and they wrote a whole story on him. And we got to researching it and just wound up with him. Okay. But it was by accident. Probably good quality road. A lot of guys use smoking guns, you know, that type of stuff. We wanted something a little different. You know, uh, that's where uh, barbecue people help barbecue people. That's what the brotherhood's about. It's it about, is. Uh, it is. You're finding out information through. and Because at the end of the day, it's just about making the best barbecue anybody in the whole world can think about. It is. Absolutely. We was on the radio show uh, 1270 AM with uh, Tommy Young, and it was fun. And we got to talking about rubs and barbecue sauces. And, and he kept looking around and said, man, I'm getting hungry in here. <laughs> he said, that's a lot of big time cooking. Of course, uh, I guess uh, the owner, Randy out there, he's good friends with Chris Little. Oh, okay. You know, Chris Little and Big Bob Gibson. Yeah, he's big time. And uh, he's probably the most gifted guy that I know, just taking spices and just sauces. mixing and it up. He, he, he knows the art of a rug. You know, that's a challenge for barbecue superstars. We're gonna have to get Chris Lilly on the camera and get an interview and because uh, I've heard his name all over. St. Louis. And He's a multiple world champion. Is he? As a young man. Yeah. He's good. And I noticed on your ribs that you didn't put mustard. Uh, do you feel like they pretty much bind, they'll bind to the rib? A lot, a lot slower, shorter cook time. A lot shorter, okay. You see what I'm saying? The, the rib, what we call breeze, a lot quicker than a brisket, so it automatically, in our opinion, it draws, it'll draw the, uh, the rub. Those are actually home ribs. Now that's interesting. Uh, we had another team down there in uh, Lakeland, and man, he put so much rub on his ribs, but his was uh, uh, brown sugar based that you couldn't even see that there was any ribs there. I mean, it was, yeah. And, uh, but uh, when you get the, the flavor of the rib, when you go to eating and you're eating the, the rub, I mean, you can't yeah. even taste the meat. Yeah, we try to stay away from that. Now, if we're in the backyard at home, my wife loves a real sweet rib, so we'll do a brown sugar honey type thing. Okay. Uh, me and my brother like a hot and spicy dry rub. But with these particular rubs right here, once they marry to the meat and start to break down, they'll kind of go away. No, oh, really? You know, it won't be a heavy crusted, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of bark on it. Yeah. You don't need that on a rib. Of course, we do sauce our ribs. Okay. And you use the cattleman sauce. No. Oh, oh, okay. We do it in stores. No, we do in stores. We do a homemade sauce for our competition. Okay. But there is some cattleman's in it. Okay. Cattleman Sauce is a great big company, and uh, we were in uh, Columbia Motor Speedway, CMS on the website if you go on events, and uh, uh, there were several teams out there. They just got the gallon of Kettleman's out and poured it on in the big old pile of... It's a, it's a, great, it's a great sauce uh, out of the box. 
Now, friends, they got four members on their team. We've got two members over here preparing the ribs, and then we've got him rubbing the rub on. Look at that brisket. Now, you can see that brisket starting to juice up a little bit. Man, and you can just see the work that the rub's doing. And uh, now, we actually had, there's a guy on the radio. Oh, my God. I got to make him eat it one more time. He said, there's no need to put a rub on a butt or a brisket. And what's your reaction to that? You got to have a rub on a brisket. Uh, just for added, and there again, your rub's not going to overpower your beef, but there is some chemical reactions that go on with the rub that helps break down fatty tissues and that type of stuff. Then you got the flavor of your bark, and yes, and some of it's going to get through the meat. Some of it does get down in there. A couple hours in your cook is the most you're going to get uh, your... Yeah, once the smoke ring forms, then that's yeah. it. It's a, yeah. And then you can do use your mops or sprays or whatever whatever it is you do. Mm -hmm. Look at them beautiful ribs. Now, friends, i tell you what. If you want to learn how to cook barbecue, you need to get out here with Daddy's Barbecue, Dad's Barbecue, and... Uh, up with them get out here and compete against them and something about just being down here around the competition it just it's like osmosis you end up learning a whole bunch don't you absolutely look at all that because we sure don't know it all it's a work in progress you know that's really the thing that you hear all the way through barbecue is that uh it is a work in progress and uh royce royce patterson and rolls royce ribs was on the uh thing and he was talking about using pecan butter to flavor his ribs and and all these different little fruit things and yeah. uh, a lot of people like apple peach pecan you know it all depends on what your what flavor profile you're trying to extract out of well look at the look at the juice and the flavor that's pulling up on that that's just amazing and I believe that's Dad right there. You're the owner, right? Dad, yeah, you have that snook in the back door. <laughs> okay. He's got three restaurants located. Uh, where are they located at? Uh, we've got uh, two in Anson, Alabama, and one in uh, Rainbow City. Okay, wow. Now, he's going to be uh, our star on our next episode. Uh, we'll have a one-hour episode in Dad's Barbecue. We want to get down to his restaurants and shoot his restaurants so we can connect that with the episode. Uh, because I tell you, we pulled up on his site here, and uh, there's something special, clean, decent, really exciting about his his whole setup here, and uh, that's why we chose him to, to try to do the prep. We're just prepared to see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You've already got some stuff loaded on there. Or oh no, you're just getting it hot. Okay. See, that's a Southern Pride cooker right there, isn't it? Yep. Okay. Now we've seen them trim them ribs. We've seen them uh, put uh, rub on the ribs. Now we're going to see them load them on the. About what temperature, uh, Dad? Do you have uh, your your cooker right now? This is a 250. But now what we're just going to do, we're going to uh, cook some. Uh, Cajun sausage, okay. burn hands just to have for appetizers later on today. Okay. And just sit around and enjoy ourselves. But we won't do anything else with this other stuff until tonight. Tonight. But we gotta have stuff to eat during the day. I heard that. Cajun sausage, that sounds good. Look at them sauces. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. Hey, you like those? <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I get about half a dozen of those take with me? Yeah. <laughs> They'll be a little better in a few minutes. I can get <laughs> okay. Let me, uh, Boy, you can feel that heat out here. Uh, he's getting ready to put them sausages on there. And, man, you know that's going to be good.
Alright, since the sausage are already pre-processed, what you're looking to do here is to get that smoke flavor pushed in there. Right. How good a job will this thing do at uh, penetrating that membrane and putting the smoke in there? Really good. It really? does well, yeah. This, uh, we have these in, our, in the restaurants. We have each, each store has two Southern Prides in them. And it, we just, we live by them. I mean, it's, uh, we, it's never let us down. And so far, it cooks everything with pretty good for us. Now friends, you don't have to have a Southern Pride cooker in order to, uh, you know, cook these sausages, but uh, Dad's has just went above and beyond the call, and he's got some fantastic food, so if you see this video and you're in Alabama, uh, you need to get on down to his restaurant and try out what he's got going on. Uh, you've seen the way that he just did his brisket and ribs, and uh, I can only imagine how good these uh, sausages are going to be. What kind of menu do you run in your rest restaurants? Uh, we have the basic menu. We have uh, chicken, you know, chicken thighs, chicken quarters, chicken breast. We have the barbecue pork, um, ribs, rosic stew, uh, collard greens, cornbread, uh, barbecue beans, a little bit of everything. Uh, what what does your basic plate run uh, dollar amount? Is it like a uh, ten dollar plate, fifteen dollar? Uh, seven nineteen. Seven dollars and nineteen cents. Hey Drew, pull the truck around. We got to get on over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey man, get it pretty good. Oh good, yeah, Drew, good. <laughs> Dynamic duo. <laughs> Hey, that's the first official uh, interview that Drew's done. I got him on the radio a little bit last night. We're gonna season up these burning ends and then put those in there. Oh, okay, great. Cover with a little more oak ridge, and that's how uh, cooking brisket all started off. Was there was some restaurant in Kansas or somewhere, and uh, they started serving burnt ends. And after a while, people were asking for burnt ends as much as they were the other stuff. So that's how brisket. At least that's the story I heard. Have you ever heard anything like that? I'm not sure. Sounds good. <laughs> No waste. Okay, so Dad himself, he put the burnt ends in there, and we're ready to go. Nothing like doing a barbecue competition and drinking a great big old Bud Light. What do you think about Bud Light? You know, I like Bud Light. I think they named that after me. My name's Bud. <laughs> <laughs> this is Light. <laughs> oh, what's Anheuser? <laughs> That's Junior. <laughs> hey, uh, how long y'all been cooking together? Oh, about eight How years? <laughs> Forty years? A, a Dodge or a Chevy or what size truck? What kind of truck you got? Only truck there is. What is it? Dodge. Dodge. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what kind of service have you had out of your Dodge? The Cummins diesel and all that. It's got about two hundred thousand miles on it. Never had any problem. No old driver. Wow. This thing about Dodge, you better like the color of it. You gonna wear it out? Your uh, pulling capacity for pulling like uh, uh, big trailers and all this, it never has any problems doing it, though. I pulled all this, we brought everything in the kitchen sink. Got no trouble. How many miles a year do you think you put on your Dodge pulling stuff? Uh, probably 20, 25,000 a year. Wow, see, that's a lot of pulling miles. Uh, and it stood up to it well. We also use backwoods cookers. Oh, backwoods? And uh, where, where do you use your backwoods cookers? What type of application do you put them on? They, uh, we use backwoods for our brisket. 
uh, pork butts, chicken, along with the southern fries. Okay. Back one side of Louisiana, Mike McGowan. I'm gonna have to get them on the website. Uh, you know, our website, as far as uh, cookers and stuff, it's all free, and uh, we'll just have to find it and put a link on. Uh, Backwoods cookers. Absolutely. Now, friends, I don't know if you noticed, but when he when he loaded that brisket down with uh, apple juice a minute ago, it actually blew up. There. Look at there. It's actually blowing up. Wow, man, that's big time. Look, friends. You need to inject, you need to put on rubs. Don't let anybody tell you not to put a rub on. If they tell you not to put a rub on, they don't know what they're talking about. Now these are your competition uh, briskets right here. You won't be vending with these. This is for the big money. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh yeah. There ain't nothing like hanging out on the Friday night and Saturday at the competition, is there? No, sir. Have you ever been to like a 2.30 meeting where they drink coffee or hang out just a little bit down at the tent? Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. Get up in the middle of the night and everybody's, you're tired, but you're competing and you're working and then everybody goes and hangs out. That's, that's part of the barbecue brotherhood. Yes, sir. Okay, let's see what this young man is doing over here. He's still pulling off that little extra fat. What's your name, buddy? Justin. Justin, and how old are you? 14. Okay. And uh, is uh, Dad your dad? Uh, John. Okay, John is your dad. Okay. What do you think about uh, competing in barbecue? I think it's pretty fun. Hey, look at there. Now, he got a big spoon. Now, we were down in uh, Winter Lakeland, and uh, this guy was struggling, struggling, struggling to get the fat off with a pair of pliers and a knife. And I want you to look at this young fella. He got him a great big old spoon and he's killing it. Man, that's a big information right there. Okay, that was too thick for the spoon, so he's gonna start it and pull it off with a knife there. to take a moment and make a shout out to Soul to Earth. Soul to Earth is signed on with Barbecue Superstars. They're officially our band and we want to make a shout out to Odell. Hey Odell, I don't know where you're at, but hey buddy, Barbecue Superstars cares about you. Get your guitar out and sing one. Oh yeah. The hardest thing is the practice that don't 
Is she with your team or is she? Uh, yes, that's Matt's wife. Watch, okay. Yeah. I'll have to get over there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we thought we was going to get an interview with Dad's wife, but it didn't quite work out. Yeah. Okay, they wrapped the brisket in plastic. And... Okay, it looks like you've already uh, uh, done some of your butts and all. You got them pretty all ready the to go. All the butts are ready. Okay. Just the brisket. Okay, that's Dad's barbecue out of uh, Anderson, Alabama. They just about got all their meat ready to go. What do you think, Drew? Uh, looking like it's ready to rock and roll to me. I was born Daryl from Barbecue Superstars, and if you notice, I'm talking just a little bit slow. I know you've seen earlier in the video that, uh, oh my goodness, these guys laid out so much food, and I tell you what, Drew got all he could eat too this time. <laughs> uh, what's your name? Rob. Rich. And your name? Derek. Uh, Brady. <laughs> Brady. Brady. McCombs. McCombs. Okay. Derek Richards. Okay. And, uh, uh, Boy, I tell you, they got a tradition down here. These fellas here don't compete. They were just raised, born, and 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 bred on barbecue. And uh, uh, talk about your childhood and, and your experience with barbecue. Well, we started when we was about ten, and that was with helping uncles out. And uh, basically, we would stay up all night shoveling coal and learning how. And as we got older, the sauce was given to us through the family, and we've been doing it ever since. Now, uh, if I was just to walk up and ask you for some sauce, uh, how would that work? Uh, I heard some stories there earlier. I, I got about a gallon. Five yeah. <laughs> about $5 a quart. Well, I, I, I was looking for a recipe. Um, 
It's in there. <laughs> Everything on recipes in there. <laughs> well, uh, tell me about your experience growing up with barbecue. Well, I've just been doing it all all our lives, and uh, we just uh, been catering for friends and family and stuff like that. And everybody said, "Y'all need to open up a restaurant." So I went to the boys one one day, and I said, "If y'all want to go into it, we'll 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 build a restaurant." So we built the restaurant, and here we are. Wow, man. I tell you what, uh, it's a good restaurant. I'm just about so full. I'm going to sit over here in Waller for a while. Uh, now, y'all got some music coming up here in a few minutes. What, what kind of music do y'all usually play? Normally, we have about any sort of bluegrass, uh, whether it's uh, uh, gospel bluegrass or, you know, more traditional. Uh, we normally have bluegrass every Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. They normally start picking anywhere from 6, 630 to close, you know, and uh a number of groups, uh, all of them love to play. Uh, I don't think you're going to find any better bluegrass. Well, tell us about that big old rib eye now. I know y'all got some big old big old steaks over here. Tell us about your steaks. We got a 12-ounce rib eye, steak and salad, I mean, a steak, salad, baked potato, um, knock your socks off. Uh, we have them hand cut every day, just like our – ground beef uh, we don't use ground beef we only use ground chuck ham patty uh, we got a half pound hamburger that you can't hardly finish and we got a one pound hamburger steak that's guaranteed to fill up the biggest appetite man he said one day they had 600 people y'all as many as 600 people come through here in a day yeah we uh we have a car show once a year an annual car show and we we feed a lot of people when we have it car show mm-hmm. it'll be coming up uh may the yeah. 7th May seventh. May the seventh, right here. Okay, and uh, what what kind of cars are these? Are they hot rods, or it's just a mix of everything? A mix, a mix of everything. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of old cars, but uh, a lot of antiques, but because uh, it's uh, kind of put on by the upstate uh, car clubs. Okay. And uh, so. well, tell tell me about uh, uh, you said something about when y'all built this place that ninety percent of it y'all actually did the work yourself, and about how how you how came about the, doing all that. Well, a big loan. <laughs> uh, you know, we got out here, cleared everything off, and uh, started construction. Took us about a year and a half, two years. Yeah. And uh, pretty much everything you see, we've done ourselves. Uh, yeah, our, our grandpa went. 70. Five. 75 did all the fancy carpentry work around here. Really? Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, Hoover put the main building up, and then we done everything else. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, now, y'all the sons, and you're the father? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure if I had that right. Uh, tell me about your and your dad's history, about you growing up with barbecue. Well, I have i hadn't been in it all my life, because my daddy didn't really do it. Okay. But uh, I got into it a little bit later in life, okay. and uh, the boys has always helped, and we just done it as a family. Yeah. Family, food, friends, and fun. And the big thing about these three fellows right here is uh, they don't compete. You know, it's not like uh, uh, they're trying to refine their barbecue because of this week's competition, and they're trying to figure out what the competition does and all that kind of stuff. They're doing it simply because there are some good old boys from Travelers Rest, South Carolina, that love barbecue, that found it as something – to bind their family together and to make a living with. They catered, they found friends and done it. And uh, I tell you, it's, it's really become like a way of life for y'all. I mean, it's, uh, and uh, you know, that's what true barbecue is all about. And the picture of this restaurant just represents what the industry's built on now. These three fellows right here really epitify what all these champions are basing their competition on they're just living it they are the roots and where it came from and i tell you it's a destination if you come down to, to greenville or down toward traveler's rest come down here on a friday come by see these fine fellas eat you a great big old plate enjoy the entertainment and then uh go enjoy yourself in greenville come back the next night and do the same thing and and come on a friday and saturday And then you're going to have to rest on Sunday because you're going to be so full. I guarantee these guys are going to kill you. You can rest on Saturday night and then go home on Sunday. People go to the Dillard House, 
Why not come to Hunting Camp Barbecue and Grill right here at Traveler's Rest? And I tell you what, they couldn't send you too many people. You'd feed them all, wouldn't you? We tell everybody where they come and go. You might go away, but if you go away hungry, it's going to be your fault, not ours. (laughs) Well, if you look at that spread that they put out across on our table, uh, me and Drew and about five other people couldn't have ate all that food, and that's what barbecue's all about. Well, let's give each one of you a chance to say uh, uh, something on the end in here. Say so say hey to your mom and dad or something. Hey, Dad. <laughs> How about you? Well, I just want to thank all of our customers we have had since we've come in, come in here. And because uh, our customers is what's really made our business. Uh, we've only done word of mouth, and that's that's more or less all the advertisement we've done. And uh, I want to thank all of our, because we have a lot of repeats. We have a lot of faithful customers, and we want to thank them. You know, I tell you, when you when you come into a place and you get full, uh, uh, it does something for your constitution, and for some reason you want to keep coming back and getting that. Uh, okay, we want to say something in closing? I hope you'll come check us out. Okay, this is Daryl Mass coming from Hunting Club Barbecue and Grill down here in Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. Uh, give your address and phone number. Hunting Camp Barbecue, Highway 2221 North, Traveler's Rest, South Carolina, 29690. Okay, and uh, what's the phone number here? 864-834-2102. Again, that's Hunting Camp Barbecue and Grill. Now, friends, I'm going to tell you something. I love this place. You know, you haven't heard me say that on all these other videos about restaurants. I love this place. So you come on down and listen to old Daryl. I tell you what, you're not going to be sorry you did. You're going to be glad you came. This is Daryl from Barbecue Superstars saying barbecue's about food, family, friends, and fun. We've got all the family. We've got all the food. We're going to go in here and have us some fun. And thank you for stopping by. Now, friends, that ain't chocolate. That's barbecue sauce. <laughs> okay. Okay, you got to get in with us. Come on, put those hands together.